What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. Uh, so if you caught the video that I put out last week where I had created an entire light show for Undertale's Megalovania using only the data from the MIDI file, um, what we're going to do this week is we're actually going to just kind of take a peek behind the curtain and see what went into uh, creating that project. If you haven't seen it, check out the card that just popped up in the corner and uh, watch that first and then come here. Uh, also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, there will be a link in the description below. With that being said, let's get started. So before I got into sound effects, I was pretty heavily focused on live music. And as my kind of audio focus shifted to more of the sound effects and game audio and working inside Unreal Engine, I, I always kind of had that live music passion just kind of festering in the back of my mind. And I've always wanted to try and find a way to combine the two. And so once I really started getting my, my hands into Unreal Engine, I thought it would be really cool to create a light show for kind of a concert setting inside Unreal Engine. And this is a project that I've, I've been working on for a very long time. Uh, I'd say probably at least the last six months, I've really wanted to dive into uh, something like what I created for Megalovania. And it actually wasn't until I found the procedural MIDI plugin created by Scott Bischel that I was really actually able to do anything with this. I really thought that I was going to have to go into the level sequencer and do everything manually. Once I found this plugin and realized that I could import a MIDI file and use that MIDI data to trigger events, that's when this project really took off for me. And uh, so while I have been working on this for about six months now, it really hasn't taken any sort of shape except for maybe the last two weeks. So if you're part of my Discord, then you know already that I've just kind of poured my entire self into this one small project. But uh, I, I want to kind of get behind the scenes and, and just show you guys kind of what went into uh, this project. Now, it wasn't always Megalovania that, that I wanted to do this for. I just wanted to do it in general. And I personally love MIDI music. So when I came across the MIDI file for Megalovania, I was like, nope, that's, that's it. That's what we got to do. And so then the next thing that I needed to do was create a stage. And so that's, that's really what I did was I used some assets that I got off the marketplace and just built this stage area. Now, this is the unlit version um, because I was doing everything with lights. I kept everything super dark, as you can tell. And so you can really only see the stage, you know, once we get into the horizon here. But that was the first thing that I did. And the next thing that I did was I needed to figure out how to actually derive that MIDI data and kind of pull everything apart and figure out a way to use it. So when it came to the procedural MIDI plugin, there's not a lot of documentation on it because it's, it's really just how you want to use it. So that was kind of the toughest part for me was trying to figure out the logic behind how to separate all this MIDI data. So if I pull over the blueprint here and uh, and show you there was this on MIDI event and then we were able to break out uh, MIDI by type channel and then there were two streams of data and as you can see this <laughs> this blueprint is actually 
massive uh, because each of these nodes then breaks into, you know, further control. But basically what I had to do was I had to figure out the logic behind this. So I took the channel, which if you know anything about MIDI, uh, MIDI runs on 16 channels of audio and each channel is a different instrument. So the first thing I needed to do was pull off and get the, the channel, which if we jump in here to this channel, you can kind of see a little further. And basically what I did was, um, MIDI typically runs channels one through 16, but Unreal handles ones as zeros, twos as ones. So I had to create a little bit of logic here. And if the channel coming out of that first MIDI break was zero, then I can create a condition. So if it's true, then we're pulling information. That way, everything on that very first channel we see and it ignores everything past that. The rest of these then are the MIDI note values. And this is honestly what took the longest. And um, that was going into the actual MIDI file, looking at the note, seeing what the MIDI value was. And okay, so if it plays this MIDI note, then it triggers this event. And so just this first sequence is the opening. So as the, the lights are panning across the stage for each of the notes, that's what this controls. And so I had to do a lot of testing. First, I started just making sure that I could get some triggers off of the initial channel. And then from there, I had to make sure that I was able to separate individual notes. And then after that point, I had to figure out if I was able to pull individual notes from multiple channels at the same time. And it was at this point that I had trouble deciding whether it was actually more fun to watch the lights or to watch the blueprint debug kind of do its thing. And so once I got all the lights set up, um, I wanted to add a little bit more to the stage show itself. And that's when I put in the screens, which the screens are not controlled by the MIDI data. Only the light is. Uh, so the, the screens are actually uh, just these decals that I have that are actually triggered in the level blueprint. I open this up. Um, I had to time out the entire sequence. So everything gets called, you know, as soon as we start the level. And then there's a little bit of a delay. And then it will pop up certain decals. After another delay, it would swap those out. And so they're actually not videos. Uh, they're decals or... Um, GIFs that I've imported because I did find a, a plugin that also allowed me to import GIFs into Unreal, which was really cool. And um, and honestly, this was a pain to get all of the different decals to swap in and out. But between the decals and deriving all the data from the MIDI file, 
Um, just in the last couple of weeks, I probably put about 50 to 60 hours into just trying to come up with how this was going to work. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I had fun working on it. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap things up for this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed kind of the peek behind the curtain into creating the light show for Megalovania using only data from the MIDI file. Make sure you tune in next week because I'll be doing a breakdown of my sound design entry for Cactus Sound's TIE Fighter Flyby Challenge. Until next time.